President Biden named Lena Khan a prominent critic of big tech as the chairwoman of the Federal Trade Commission. It's a sign that the agency is likely to crack down even further on uh, the industry's tech giants. Joining us now to discuss this is Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Uh, Congresswoman, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate your time. Let's start with that appointment of, uh, of Khan, now in the driver's seat at the FTC. What do you think it means for change in the tech industry? How might her appointment reshape the industry? It's a very exciting appointment. I worked with Chairwoman Khan uh, for the last 16 months as we worked on this investigation into antitrust. She has a very strong uh, competence around this topic. She understands why we have to be aggressive in taking on monopolies and protecting competition with small businesses and choice for consumers. And the fact that she got an overwhelmingly bipartisan uh, confirmation from the Senate was very good news. I think this is one of the areas where Republicans and Democrats agree that we have to do important work. And I think she's going to be aggressive in making sure that the FTC is uh, both enforcing existing antitrust laws, but also, uh, you know, taking on whatever big challenges they can. And she obviously is very supportive of the recommendations that came out of the 16-month uh, investigation of the Judiciary Committee last year. Now, Congresswoman, another bipartisan initiative has been some of the big tech uh, legislation, antitrust legislation uh, that you yourself are, are a supporter of as well. Uh, curious to know, because the FTC previously had been a fairly toothless agency in, in going up against some of these big tech companies. You yourself said that some of them, frankly, were too big to care. We had seen some record breaking uh, sums, at least when it came in terms of fines, but they were really drops in the bucket for some some of these companies. Uh, going forward, how much do you think having Khan in the driver's seat um, as a chairwoman at the FTC, but also coupled with some of these new bills, that we'll actually see some measure of regulation and, and punishment that almost hurts some of these companies? Well, we have to, because ultimately we are about ensuring competition thrives, innovation thrives, small businesses thrive, and that consumers have choices. And I think the combination of Chairwoman Khan, her understanding, her aggressiveness on the subject, but then these uh, five bills that we just introduced on Friday, bipartisan bills, to really take on the monopoly power of these dominant tech platforms uh, is going to provide additional tools to the FTC and the DOJ to do what they need to do to rein in this anti-competitive behavior and ultimately to have really meaningful fines levied and uh, to structurally separate lines of business. And that's the bill that I have, the Ending Platform Monopolies Act, which says that you cannot have, and it will be unlawful with this bill, to have uh, a dominant platform actually own and operate multiple lines of business that pro pro uh, produce conflicts of interest. Because when you have Amazon selling and allowing others to sell on their platform, so they get all the data, they set all the terms, and they basically have a dominant advantage um, to be able to uh, take advantage of those businesses, it drives businesses out of business. When you have Google buying and selling ad revenue on the same platform, it hurts independent publishers. When you have Apple controlling the app marketplace so that people can't even get off the ground without access, uh, it hurts consumers and those small businesses. And the same thing, obviously, with Facebook. Uh, so I think that this is a really important set of bills. They are all bipartisan, and they will provide new tools to the FTC and to the Department of Justice to ensure that we preserve competition and that we protect consumers. Well, certainly, Congresswoman, response from the tech company was pretty swift here. They're saying that these proposed regulations would, in essence, kneecap, that's their word, American companies, undermine innovation, especially at a time when we are trying to become more globally competitive, especially as it relates to China. How do you continue to foster innovation while, um, while mandating these regulations and these parameters in which the companies would have to exist? Well, what's really interesting is that these bills are the result of a 16-month investigation with hundreds of small businesses testifying, uh, you know, many, many hearings, and uh, 
tens of thousands of documents that we got from the tech platforms to really examine exactly what was happening. And then of course, culminated with having the CEOs of those four companies come and testify. And I think part of the reason you have this bipartisan agreement is because it is very clear that while the tech platforms say that they are actually fostering an innovation and competition, they're doing exactly the opposite. We heard from hundreds of small businesses who have either been put out of business or you know, had their business greatly diminished or feel like they have absolutely no choice to get off of that platform. And so that is why I think we have seen in the history of antitrust, whether it was the railways or the baby bells or whether it was Microsoft, which had to go through something similar with an antitrust lawsuit that was filed and the settlement that was made, that it was those uh, settlements, those breakups, all of those things that actually helped ensure that there were uh, other businesses that came up and were able to innovate, that these dominant platforms didn't have so much power that they could stop that from happening. And I think that's why there's overwhelming support across the country, across partisan lines, to make sure that we do rein in these big companies, these big tech platforms, and uh, provide more tools to ensure that they do not become so dominant that they are too big to care, as I asked Mark Zuckerberg during the questioning. Yeah, interestingly enough, some actually uh, antitrust legislation aimed at Microsoft in the 90s uh, gave rise to some of the companies that you guys are going after right now. You know, everyone says that increased competition is essentially going to be good for consumers. But some of the criticism and the response that some of these companies have had is that actually these bills in the long run are actually going to harm the consumer. What is your response to that? And are you saying that there is absolutely no risk at all that going after a company, for example, like Amazon, isn't going to result perhaps in higher prices for consumers down the, lo down the road? Yeah, it's so good that you, uh, you know, you mentioned that about Microsoft because we, we actually had Brad Smith in to testify uh, in some conversations. I've been in deep conversation with him. Obviously, he also is from our region, from my, my district. And I think that's exactly right. And it shows why ultimately you help consumers when you, uh, when you undertake strong antitrust regulation. The reality is that we believe in innovation and competition as being the best opportunity for consumers to get the best prices and the most choices. When you have dominance of the level that you have with the four tech platforms, the reality is that that is not what we see in, in the marketplace. These uh, small businesses have literally no opportunity to thrive. They are forced into agreements that they have to abide by while the dominant platform does not. They are forced to either sell or be acquired or be killed. They are forced to agree to all kinds of products in order to get the preferential placement on these platforms. And so in every way possible, I think what we will see is the market will restructure and ultimately it benefits those small businesses and the consumers. And the high prices, let's just be clear, when you kick everybody out of business, you may have some low prices for a very short period of time, but the minute there is dominance in that market, you will again see those prices increase. That's the whole point of antitrust is to prevent that dominance from happening because while you might undercut initially, ultimately the consumer's paying a higher price. All right, we're gonna leave it there. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, thanks so much for your time today.